So on Romeo and Juliet, we have two casts. We have the Montague cast and the Capulet cast. And the reason for that is because we need the two casts because when one cast is performing, the other cast is rehearsing with the next new local cast. Therefore, we have one cast performing, one cast rehearsing, and then when that cast is rehearsing, the other cast is performing. And it's very different to our normal way of rehearsing because normally we rehearse with three casts. Everybody learns two, sometimes three roles, and everybody is all together. So it's just one company. And it's actually, in some ways, it's been a bit easier because it means we've only got two casts that we need to work with. And it means that one whole cast is watching while we're staging and setting something. So it's much then much easier for that cast to step into what we've just staged. And everybody gets a chance to um, develop and work on the new scenes that we're doing together. So this project has been very interesting because we have a very big choreographic creative team. So we've got Matthew and myself, and then we've got our young associate choreographer, Ariel Smith. We've also got two resident uh, directors, Neil Westmoreland, Alan Vincent, and then we've got our rehearsal director, Paul Smithhurst, who's primarily been working with the young casts with Ariel, but also has stepped up to teach material in our rehearsal process. Matthew always likes it when people offer their ideas. Because there's so many of us, it's quite a difficult thing to manage. And I'm usually quite good at trying to manage the room and make sure that it's not too confusing, that there aren't too many voices all at once. But we've slowly got into a rhythm about how, how we work. And it is very difficult when you've got a brilliant idea and you're burning to tell what your idea is and we're just working on something else. It can get difficult to corral everybody and make sure that we're getting the job done. And it is really different to other shows that we work on because usually it is just Matt and myself with you know a rehearsal team. We've, we've got into a bit of a flow about how we work and I seem to be the main leader in the rehearsal room to make sure that Matt can facilitate what he needs to do as well as me being aware of what the other people creatively need to do in the room. Ariel has been amazing in that she's been able to slot into the way Matt works and has managed to pitch herself brilliantly within our team. She's, she gets on really well with Matt, she gets on really well with me and we've managed to make that work. Because she's so confident and she's very clear about what she wants, she can then talk very easily with Matt and, and offer her ideas, which has been brilliant. Um, I've been so involved in the searching for the young talent for the six young dancers that join each venue. I've gone to every audition to find those young dancers, but also just backtracking to thinking about what the show was going to be when we were having early conversations. Matt was so open to me being involved with those conversations. I feel really privileged that I've been able to influence what our plot is now. So not even just choreographically in the room, I'm, my ideas for the plot and for what we're going to do to the story. That part of the process, it wasn't expected, but I was really happy that I've, it's not just been I've walked into the studio and started doing some steps, it's been the whole, and that's what a choreographer does. So I think that's really important that I did that, but I'm also wasn't expecting it. And now when we've got into rehearsals, it's definitely not been sort of assisting Matt. He's opened the floor to me and really allowed me to sort of take charge in some bits of the show. And we've got a real rhythm of when he thinks, you know, that's my kind of thing, he just lets me do it. And then for some things, I, I love watching him work as well. So it's nice to sit back and watch him do, because he's great obviously watch him do his thing he's so great at, with the principles and getting the sort of real storyline through is his real strength and for me I've never done anything like that yeah I'd say this show is definitely different to other new adventures productions because the young people so the young creatives but also the young dancers that are in the show I think it's amazing that this show about young people is being created by young people because I think to be able to talk about things that are relevant to young people today, we need to have the influence and the voice of you. And it's not just from the creative team, working with the young dancers has really 
helped us achieve that. But I think what this show gives as well is a new, much more, as every new adventure show does, a more um, 21st century look at things like gender and things that we're really talking about at the moment. Uh, how, how we sort of look at a man and a woman on stage, especially for our Juliet. I think we're seeing the Juliet's role in a very, she's a very different Juliet. So I think that's quite exciting. And people expecting Romeo and Juliet as they know it will not get that. And I'm, I, I presume people will expect that from me anyway, because that's what we've always done with all our stories. They all have a few surprises in them, really, which keeps it exciting. I think I've always felt that you don't want to go and see something where you already know the outcome. So I like to think we can just do that in dance as well. And, you know, we're not using the Shakespeare words, so we're, we're telling a Romeo and Juliet type story. A lot of the characters are still there, but sort of reimagined in different, you know, the relationships are slightly different sometimes. People who know the story of Romeo and Juliet will see that there's a lot of parallels uh, to it, but also there's a few twists and things that they may not expect to happen.